Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next uh, topic I want to talk about, and this is a tough one, and this has happened to me. If you're in business long enough, this is going to happen to you. It just is, and you got to learn to deal with it. Um, and it's how to deal with a bad review. You know, I can remember the first bad review. You never forget a bad review. And I can remember the first bad review that I got, and it hit me like like a ton of bricks. And um, I, I just remember getting full of anxiety. And I, in my mind, of course, I made it much bigger than, than it was. And I just imagined like every single person I knew and lived in Vegas and, and, and the surrounding, you know, states of Vegas, you know, N- Nevada saw this bad review and they were all reading it. And then they were all talking about it and talking about <laughs> me. I mean, that's just, that's just what the mind does. Well, at least that's what my mind does. And it was really, really bad. And I don't think I handled bad reviews well in the beginning. Um, you know, I think I ignored them and just wished that they went away. And, uh, and, and, and they don't, you know, and that's not the right way to handle it. Um, so I think, first of all, you know, you have to be prepared. You know, it, it is going to happen. And a lot of times it's nothing that you even did wrong. And bad review comes from, uh, not because, you know, you did anything wrong or you didn't do a good job or anything like that. A lot of these bad reviews come from clients that are just, I don't know, can I say it? Assholes. (laughs) Yeah. Or too picky. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, sometimes they're just, not nice people. And they, and they, and they get a, you know, they, they head straight to social media and they want to try to destroy you. And, um, and not that there's not a place, you know, where sometimes, a, a bad review is warranted online. Um, I, I have never written a bad review online about any company ever, not once in my lifetime. It's just not how I roll. Um, it's not my thing. Um, I, I, I would rather call the, con- and I did have a restaurant one time that I had a real, I had a bone to pick with him, man. And, um, you know, I had a dog that was, um, she was, she was a service dog and, uh, and, uh, in this restaurant, you know, didn't let, let me in and believe me, I wanted to write a bad review, but instead, um, I calmed down and I called the restaurant and, um, I actually, they actually had me come back down and I had a conversation with them and it all worked out really good. Thank goodness. But, um, but some people, it's the first thing they do as a remedy. They go straight to social media. They're really explicit with their wording. Right. And their intention is to hurt you, you know, um, and some people are better bad review writers than others, right? They're a little bit well behaved, you know, more behaved, um, if there's such a thing, you know, a good, bad review writer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, versus a bad review writer. Uh, but the first thing that you should know and do when a bad review pops up is you need to respond quickly. Like don't ignore it. Ignoring it is the worst thing you could do. And sometimes we don't want to face it. You know, I remember mm-hmm. not wanting to face my first uh, bad review. You just, you just, you just want it to go away, you know, magically go away. And it doesn't. So respond quickly. And um, again, ignoring it is the worst thing that you could do. Um, secondly, you want to acknowledge the complaint, right? Acknowledge the complaint and apologize. Do not get defensive. Like you don't want to sit down and those fingers start going and you just start defending yourself. And, and so don't write your response when you're super hot headed and you're feeling the most affected by it. So although that you should respond quickly, you also want to give yourself time to calm down and not respond straight from emotion, right? Uh, because 
uh, that can cause problems. You may, you may end up regretting it. You may end up writing something that you wished you hadn't. Um, so take a little bit of time to calm down and think about what you want to write, construct a really professional, uh, response because think about this. Other people do see that bad review and I think other people, either potential clients that maybe were thinking about coming to you and they were checking out your Google reviews or your Yelp reviews and they come across this new bad review, they're sitting in the wings waiting to see how you respond. So that's why it's important to respond and it's important to, you know, take the high road, stay professional, don't get defensive, but acknowledge the complaint, right? And apologize, even if it's ridiculous. And I have had some ridiculous bad reviews. They're so ridiculous. You, you think this has just got to be another PMU artist in town. <laughs> I mean, doing this to us because this, this complaint is so ridiculous. You'll even look in your, 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 uh, your schedule and you're like, I don't even have a client that name, you know? <laughs> I mean, this is so ridiculous. Um, but even so it's, it's there in black and white and, and people can see it. So even if you think it's a bad fake re- review, it's, it's, it's a ridiculous review, Um, people are waiting, just waiting to see how you respond. So respond, um, with professionalism and, uh, be authentic and be personal, you know, be humble, authentic, and personal. And, and, and even if you don't agree with what they're saying, you apologize that this was their experience. You know, I, I, you know, acknowledge what they're saying and just, you know, I, I'm sorry that this was your experience, you know, with me and, and my company, you know, it's my intention that everybody always has a wonderful experience and, you know, and then go from there. So, um, that's really, really important to do. Um, and, and while you're respond, responding, I think it's really good if you, try in a very tactful way, promote your business or company, um, in a positive way, like tact, tactively speak about your business in a very professional way, but tactfully, <laughs> um, cause there's a tactful way to do it. And then there is a way to do it where, you know, you're coming across defensive and you're defending and, you know, you don't want to come across that way, but if you can tactively figure out a way to promote a positive image of your company while you're responding, that's always going to be, um, uh, that's always going to be really, really good, you know, for, uh, for your response, for your business. And, um, and it's going to impact those watching this, you know, watching this and people that may come across that, come across that bad review. Um, let me see. The next thing that I think is really, really important is you want to take it offline, right? You do not want this to turn into an online battle, a tit for tat online for everybody to watch. So it's important to respond once online, right? Uh, in the ways that I just mentioned, and then try to get it off line and continue. If it requires continue conversation with this person, do your best to get it offline and do that communicating either, you know, by, uh, email, text, phone, and resolve it offline in a private setting. That is just going to be the best thing to do. I mean, I, I, it makes me cringe when I go read some of these bad reviews, um, at restaurants or some of the places, you know, Kat and I may, you know, pull up and look at the reviews and you see this just back and forth, right? I mean, this back and forth between the owner and the person, and it tends to get more and more nasty. And so, uh, try to nip it in the bud. One really good, well thought out response and then get it offline. Um, and again, if additional communication is required, do it offline. 
and then try to try to make it right. You know, try to make it right, whatever that may be. Um, and I get that sometimes the look, the client's not always right. And the client may think the client's always right. But if you service the public, if you're in the service industry and you service, service the public, you know that there are instances where the client's not always right. The client, um, it, it, it's, is ridiculous. You know, it's like their expectations weren't realistic. They didn't mm-hmm. listen to a word that we said. Um, you know, maybe, maybe there's anger issues. Um, you know, and they can get very rude. They can threaten, you know, um, and thank goodness most people are not like this. And it is rare that you, that you do come across this, you know, in my business, you know, I've been very blessed. Um, and it, and it's rare that we get a, a client like that, but it does happen. But I think it's good to always make it right. And making it right doesn't always mean that you're going to continue working on that client, that you're going to keep that client, uh, that person as a client. Um, because, you know, just like some relationships, you know, some <laughs> romantic relationships, some marriages, you get to a point where it's just going to be healthier and better for both parties if you resolve your differences and you both leave feeling heard, acknowledged, and the situation resolved. I just think that's healthy between two people, you know, whether it's a married couple, you know, some dating or client practitioner, right? I just think that's a healthy way to end it. I certainly don't want someone leaving, even though I, if I'm not going to work on them again, I I may have no desire to ever have that type of personality um, in my studio again, like, like, it's just not going to work out. Um, I still don't want that person leaving angry at me or feeling, um, I didn't hear her. I I want it resolved, but that's just who I am as a human being. So maybe that just flows over in the way that I deal with these types of situations. Um, and every once in a while, as, as much, I think I've had a couple instances, one in particular, and I will, I will tell you about it where it did not get resolved. Um, there was just no resolving anything with this lady and it was over pricing and touch-ups and this, you know, like a lot of us deal with in PMU, you know, their skin may not take well and you know, this, that, and the other bad reviews and, um, which led into a refund situation where, which I'm going to segue right into <laughs> and then go a little bit more detail into, uh, that particular client. So that's how you want to handle a bad review, right? Don't ignore yeah. it. Wait till you calm down and uh, you're able to take the high road and not answer out of anger, you know, um, answer it with grace and uh be polite tactfully try to uh i feel like the the best way is to like put yourself as though you are the client to see how you would interact with that business if you saw how you were acting yeah if that makes sense because before you came to girls inc you were the manager of a clothing store yeah right and you you were the manager yeah so you have a lot of service you know i mean different but still, you're dealing with the public, you know, people tr- probably trying to bring back clothes or not happy or whatnot. I mean, no matter what service industry you're in, whether yeah. it's permanent makeup or running a boutique or anytime you have to deal with the public, you deal with these situations. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you just have to put the the business first. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like sometimes you just got to like be nice to the person, even though, you know, they're in the wrong, they're in the wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And we do that a lot in here in girls Inc. You know, we uh, always, I always put the business for, you know, uh, and, and, uh, and try to work it out with the client, you know, and apologize. And thank God it doesn't happen that often, you know, and, and I think I'm a really fair person. So I don't have a quick fuse. I'm not quick to be defensive. You know, I do try to work it out, but there's always going to be those 
people where there is no, where, I mean, I've been pushed, mm-hmm. you know, to have my, I've been pushed with my back against the wall a couple of times where, you know, I mean, I, I, I've had to walk someone out of here like, like this just ain't happening, you know? <laughs> I mean, it just sometimes, you know, but I've been yeah. doing this 22 years, you know, over 20,000 clients. And so, you know, if it's only happened a handful of times out of all those years and all those clients, I think those are pretty good. Pretty good percentages, pretty good yeah. odds, right? Like, yeah. Really good odds. Those are pretty good odds, you know. <laughs> Overall, you know, I, I, you know, it's, it's yeah. been really, really good. But it's, it is those bad ones, you yeah. know, that kind of stick out in your mind and can ruin your whole yeah. damn month. For Forget yeah. ruin your day. I mean, they can ruin your whole month. They can make you want to quit, yep. you know, because then you get, you get anxiety and you think, oh, my God, everybody's going to be like that. And I just, you know, she's not worth it. But you can't let people have that much power over you. Yeah. And the truth is that like a lot of people will leave bad reviews instead of good reviews. Mm -hmm. Because people are more motivated to leave that that bad review because they're so angry. But you don't see a lot of like clients that leave happy. They're not most times they're not going to leave a good review unless you motivate them to. Right, exactly. Because they're happy, there's no reason for them to like to leave a. Re- we yeah. almost have to motivate them yeah. too, right? To we have to encourage them to leave a good review. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but they're very quick to yeah. go leave a bad they review, are. right? Yeah, no, I get it. And there's some instances too. I think it's Yelp, um, and it might be Google too. I'm not sure. I mean, I had I've I've had two review bad reviews removed off Yelp because I did not do the service, and if you don't actually do the service yelp will remove the bad review and i had two different instances and in their bad review they even said that um they didn't get this they didn't end up booking the appointment because you know i don't i can't even remember now but they gave some excuse it was during a consult you know they did you know whatever reason i can't even remember but I didn't do the service and they revealed that in their review. So I sent that into Yelp and because I did not actually perform the service, it got removed. So Yelp, I don't know if Yelp still has that policy in place, but in order for a bad review to remain, the service has to have been performed. I have, you have to like, I have to tattoo you. (laughs) You can't like, yeah, you can't call me on the phone and not like how the conversation goes or, you know, or whatnot, come in for a consult and, you know, we, we, we don't jive and you don't like something I said and then go leave a bad review. I had to have performed PMU on you. Um, and I did get a bad review removed on Google once as well once it's harder it's a little bit harder on google but it was a fake bad review and um and i did hire somebody i hired somebody to come in and track down that bad review and they did a little computer forensics i don't know how they do it but they did and that's how bad that bad review bothered me and i felt i knew who Mm -hmm. was doing it and then it was a a, it was it was a very malicious bad review and um and it got personal and so, uh, yeah, they, so they, they, they tracked it down and we knew, so I sent in the report and Google removed it immediately and removed this person from Google, removed her. Wow. Re- yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was a, a PMU artist here in wow. town. Yeah. And I had a feeling this is like 13, 14, many, 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 many years ago. So, you know, so, so that's how to deal with a bad review. And then, as I just mentioned, um, you can also fight it, you know, you know, you can, you know, report it and fight it, uh, with both, you know, Yelp and Google and try to get it removed. And it's worth trying because sometimes they will get removed. And you know, my mm-hmm. whole, you know, my whole thing, my whole thing is, <laughs> you know, if you have way more good review. If you've got 300 good reviews and five bad reviews, those five bad reviews, no matter how bad and how much they bother you, they get lost. They get swallowed up by all those good reviews. So, um, so that's why I became obsessed with encouraging our clients to leave a good review you know, and, and we hound them, you know, I'll email yeah. them. Yeah. You, know, hey, you, you sent me a after picture, your brows look yeah. great, but I still don't see your good review. Please, you know, <laughs> don't leave us a review. And, um, 
and so and so we're pretty good. We we have a good uh, a percentage of clients now uh, leaving leaving reviews. But imagine if every client we did left a review, you know, oh, a good review. That would you be, know, we would have yeah, thousands. Okay. Yeah. But um, it is hard to get someone to write a good review. But there's certain incentives like you could you can do. You can always you know, give them a little discount, um, you know, on their, on their touch up or their next service, you, you know, uh, you know, there's just little things to encourage them, uh, to give, you know, a, a good review. Not that you want to buy good reviews, but sometimes people need a little <laughs> reminder, cause a little mm-hmm. reminder. Yeah. A little reminder, but, um, yeah. So try to get, Try to try to focus on getting people leaving those good reviews because, like I said, you know the bad reviews get get swallowed up by all those good reviews. Um, so that's good. And and I know when I'm looking at reviews in Canada because we do, we do a lot of restaurants and we we like looking for new restaurants and we always go look at the reviews. So, you know, and I think that's kind of human nature now. I think if you know when we go to a new restaurant or we're trying to find a new restaurant or a new show or something like that i mean we'll look at the reviews i want to see what other people's experience was and if i see you know a few bad reviews but many 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 more good reviews then um i i i leave feeling this is a great place for cat and i to go try even though there was some bad reviews there were a lot more good reviews and that tends to um win me over if if you will 